what you see on that picture actually has the claim to the title of the world's largest flying machine. It has the name Airlander. And yes, today we are going to talk about the possible renaissance of airships in modern aviation industry. Hello my friends and welcome. My name is Dennis and as you probably know, I am the airline captain. Let's go. Bum, bum. I'm sure that these days you don't see these airships flying around carrying goods and passengers, but it wasn't like this before. For example, in 1930s, the airships were the most popular transportation, the air transportation to cross the Atlantic Ocean. So let's take the biggest airship ever built. And the name of this is Hindenburg. Let's draw it. Yes, now we have the airship here. The Hindenburg was very, very big. Actually, the size of the Hindenburg was very close to the size of Titanic. It was that long, that wide. The length of the Hindenburg was a little bit longer than 800 feet. It's uh, 245 meters, quite a lot, my friends. And as you can see, we have the airfoils on the back. So the same rudders, the uh, vertical stabilizer, the horizontal stabilizer to keep the, uh, the aircraft under control. This is not the passenger cabin. Actually, this is the control cabin. The passenger cabin was here and it had the double deck construction. So it has it had the living rooms, the dining room, even the piano lounge, the smoking room. And this aircraft was capable to carry 72 passengers and 52 crew members. So totally 124 people. A lot you may say, but I would say it's quite low number for this size of the airship. And now new, with new technologies that will help the engineers to create the new design of the airships, this number may increase in several times. But for that time, this was the breaking uh, era for the air traveling. The speed of the sea liner is usually uh, 35 mph miles per hour. And the speed of the Hindenburg was around uh, 75 miles per hour. So you may cross the Atlantic two times faster, even a little bit more than two times faster. And you also not only reaching the coast of the Europe or the coast part of the United States, you also reaching the you may reach the city, for example, as Frankfurt in Germany. So you cross the sea and you fly over the land. The usual height to fly over the land was around 200 meters. And here comes the first reason why we don't see these objects flying around uh, today. The reason is speed. You see, this construction has lots of drag and it's not very powerful. It's a huge thing floating in the air. So that is why you have the maximum speed. Even nowadays, it's not more than 90 knots. Claimed to be for the Airlander, the new type of the airship. And of course, if you want to carry lots of people in a fast manner, in an efficient manner, it's better to use modern commercial airplanes. But was it the luxurious way of transportation? Compared to modern airplanes, it was. But was it the same as in sea liners like SS Normandia or Titanic? No, it wasn't even close to that. You see, they were fighting to reduce the weight of this airship. So you might not find some luxurious things that you might have on ocean liners. So for example, in a piano lounge here, the piano weight was reduced by three times and the piano itself was made from alloy. Or aluminum and after all the piano was removed. So even Hindenburg was not as luxurious as ocean liners of that time so many people would rather bought the tickets for ocean liner with all that facilities, theaters and sometimes even pools. Here we have the shared bathroom so yes if you have the room here 
the private room it's not very private because here you need to share the bathroom and so on on the cruise ship you don't need to do it you had your own room with your private uh, bathroom and that room actually much cheaper than the room on the airship if you count the inflation the ticket price for that airship for modern money would cost seven thousand bucks just for the simple room seven thousand dollars my friends that's quite a pricey ticket for that amount you might have gotten yourself to the best room of titanic uh, quite bad comparison i do agree and we have reason number two and number three here first it was not so luxurious as ocean liners and the ticket price was absolutely high and yes everyone knows the sad destiny of the hindenburg on 6th of may 1937 this airship burst into flames while attempt the landing to new jersey so because the main reason was because they used the uh, hydrogen instead of helium so we have two elements hydrogen which is much lighter compared to helium helium is not flammable hydrogen is very flammable so because they used the hydrogen there was no other way because the united states where the helium was produced they blocked uh, the helium transportation to the Europe because they thought that the Germans may use it to create weapons so that is why hydrogen was used very flammable element but much lighter than helium by the way the helium is not renewable resource however hydrogen is very easy to obtain I don't know why they use the helium for the new airships because now the technologies are more safer than before so probably we'll see also helium inside the modern day airships not helium but hydrogen sorry but the main reason why airships died out were the airplanes because they were able to reach the other shore across the atlantic ocean not within days but within the hours so the new era began the era of airplanes bum, bum. and now let's speak about the modern days airship the airlander 10 why 10 because it's promised to be able to carry 10 tons of the payload with lengths of just 95 meters so the payload is even more compared to the old but huge hindenburg why is it possible because of the modern day technologies so this airship the airlander 10 is able to carry 10 tons of cargo and stay in the air for five days it's able to cover 4,000 miles and it's able to climb to altitude of 20,000 feet and that will make this airplane to reach very remote areas and that is the main reason why we need it you see the old airships required special docking towers because they were unable to land everywhere but this problem seems to be solved with the airlander because it may land actually so it has special devices i would say like a special landing gear to land in very remote areas just on a middle in the middle of terrain or it may float and put the cargo on the ground while floating and it might be the best solution for the regions where you cannot build the runway long enough to accommodate the large cargo airplanes and for the remote regions where you cannot even reach with the helicopter so here the speed is not the important thing the important thing is to deliver goods or people to kind of remote area for this thing i think the airlander is perfect however it's also crashed during the test flight so let's see the video here we go probably the slowest crash in aviation so they had a problem with the mooring uh, rope uh, from what i was able to read uh, the rope was uh, stuck somewhere and the airlander just was diving diving down crazy and kind of slow everyone was okay on board there were i think two people 
from what I was able to remember. Boom! So the airlander just hit the ground. The part of the control cabin or control cockpit was destroyed. Uh, very poor job from the cameraman. <laughs> but everyone survived, my friends. Crazy. However, that accident didn't stop them and they want to restart the test flights of Airliner 10 this year again. And more, they want to build the bigger Airlander, Airlander 50, that would be able to carry 50 tons of cargo or 200 passengers. So if you ask me, my friends, do those airships have future? I would say rather yes than no, because there are many remote regions where you cannot, uh, that you cannot reach with airplane or helicopter. And for that special niche, we have, we will probably have the airlander or other airship to deliver goods and people. And also, my friends, I think you are awesome. That is why just follow the awesome guy checklist. First, just like this video, then subscribe to my channel, and after that, ring the bell, whatever it means. Thank you very much for your attention and have a great time. Pam, pam.